primetime hidden cameras take you into a doctor's office, and you'll get a chance to see what we catch. I will reassure you we'll take great care of you. Okay. Okay? This doctor is about to perform surgery on her. Surgery experts tell us she should never have. Tonight, Chris Wallace investigates the most popular elective surgery in this country, LASIK eye surgery. How often do doctors operate on patients whose eyes might be seriously damaged forever? You told her that she was a good candidate mm -hmm. and you were moments away from operating on her. And take a look at this, the strange and confusing way Jeff Hockman often sees the world now. A disorienting blur of lights and signs and traffic. There were nights where I cried myself to sleep. And I said, you know, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. Like thousands of other people, he wishes someone had warned him. It makes you feel betrayed and, and, and violated and like somebody, you know, somebody's hurt you. From ABC News, this is Primetime Thursday with Diane Sawyer and Charles Gibson. And now from New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. We're glad to have you with us. We begin with an important primetime investigation into the most popular elective surgery in America. Every week, nearly 40,000 people choose to have LASIK eye surgery, a quick procedure that promises you can throw away your glasses. Tonight, come along with our undercover cameras as we show you what can happen, how some people may not be good candidates for the surgery, but some doctors may do it anyway. Senior correspondent Chris Wallace investigates the quest for perfect vision. You're watching hidden camera footage of a doctor moments away yeah. from performing LASIK surgery on a patient experts say should well, not have the procedure. 80% of our patients see 20, 20 or better. They say her vision could be seriously hurt, but the doctor never tells her of the danger. I will reassure you we'll take great care of you. Okay. Okay. Approved by the federal government just six years ago, LASIK has grown from a medical miracle into a $2 billion industry. Some two million people are expected to have the operation this year alone. When performed well on the right person, it's a great surgery. You're going to feel some pressure on your eye. Dr. Joseph Delarusso is one of the best known LASIK surgeons in New York City. But these days, Delarusso spends more and more of his time in what's becoming a new specialty repairing work done by other doctors. It is a new specialty, unfortunately. Um, and the number of people who are being harmed is just going to accumulate every year. So why does LASIK sometimes go so wrong? Well, experts tell us in at least half the problem cases, the key is not how the surgery is done, but who's getting it. It turns out not everyone with vision problems should have LASIK. And if you're a bad candidate and still have the procedure, the results can be devastating. Basically, every aspect of my life, I need some help from someone to get through just day-to-day -day things that I normally was able to do alone. A primetime investigation has found many cases of people like these who learned after the fact they never should have had the surgery. I just want to go to bed. I just want to sleep because that's when my eyes are closed and I don't have to deal with what I see. Stock trader Jeff Hockman's case is typical. He had LASIK after being told he was an excellent candidate. He's had bad vision problems ever since, especially at night. When there's a lot of cars on the road and there's a lot of headlights coming at me, I see a lot of starbursts and a lot of glare. Last October, Hockman went to see a new doctor, Della Russo, for help. And there, he got some startling news. When you checked out his eyes, was Jeff Hockman a good candidate for LASIK? No. No. Never should have had the... Never should have had it done. I feel like I'm wearing a permanently bad pair of contact lenses, which I wish I could take off at night, and I can't. If you're looking for the problems before surgery, it's not very difficult to find them at all. Dr. Barry Soloway of the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary explained what makes someone a bad candidate. Jeff Hockman's problem, large pupils. If they're bigger than the area hit by the laser as it reshapes the eye, the patient will see out of both the treated and untreated areas and can end up with double vision and glare. Another common problem, if the cornea is too thin, it can be damaged by the laser. 
because we're removing tissue, the cornea might get too thin and start changing its shape just because of lid movement or pressure in the eye. I've heard that story hundreds of times. Ron Link says too many people have paid the price for poor LASIK screening. Link used to be a fireman until his eyes were damaged from surgery. He started a website called SurgicalEyes.com. Link says he knows of more than 1,400 what he calls LASIK disasters. It's just been a tidal wave of misery all over uh, an elective procedure, something medically unnecessary. Open both eyes and look straight ahead. To make matters even worse, there's very little doctors can do to help those patients after LASIK. Usually, the damage is permanent. So why are doctors operating on people who are bad candidates? They just want to do the surgery. What do you mean they want to do the surgery? They want to make money. This can be a very lucrative uh, procedure if you do enough. But I mean, we're talking about people's eyes. We're talking about their vision for the rest of their life. Right, right. They don't care. They just don't care. De La Russo says with big corporations running high volume clinics, some doctors end up making decisions based on business, not medicine. <laughs> Using our hidden cameras, we wanted to see how hard it is to find a surgeon ready to operate on someone who's a bad candidate for LASIK. It didn't take us long. You can do the surgery on my eye? Uh-huh. A number of surgeons said, we can't operate on you. There's too much of a risk. Mm -hmm. You were ready to go, sir. Prime time continues, and now Charles Gibson. As we have said, LASIK surgery is a quick and effective procedure that has let millions of people throw away their glasses. But for some people, the surgery carries great danger. So we decided to send in a high-risk patient with our hidden cameras, watching whether doctors would be willing to operate on her. Chris Wallace picks up the story. Stacy Simmon is a mother of two who runs a daycare center in New Jersey. Like millions of Americans, she wanted to have LASIK eye surgery to get rid of contacts that she says are a nuisance. The children are finding it very funny that I'm constantly popping my eyes out, and um, it interferes. Let's take a look at your other eye here. She went to see New York surgeon Joseph Della Russo, but after checking her eyes, he told Stacy she should not have LASIK. Not now. Not ever. She was a perfect non-candidate, absolute non-candidate. We're not talking, you know, one doctor no, says no, no, one no, thing, no. one... She's not borderline. She absolutely is, cannot be treated with LASIK. We wanted to see for ourselves if there are doctors who would operate on someone who experts say is clearly a bad candidate for LASIK surgery. Someone who could be hurt by the procedure. You might think that checking out your eyes before an operation would be done with great care, but not always. Stacy became our test candidate. She went to another LASIK expert, Dr. Barry Soloway, for a second opinion. Like Della Russo, he found her pupils are enormous and her corneas are very thin. Off the charts. I mean, should not have LASIK surgery. Period. End of the story. Now we sent Stacy to a number of LASIK centers in New York with a hidden camera. Several clinics told her she shouldn't have the procedure. But then Stacy went to a surgeon who was ready to operate on her. So I can have this done? Yes, you can. I'm a good candidate? You are. Dr. Vrakas Jan flies between Illinois, Ohio, and New York performing LASIK. Advertising heavily in newspapers, Jan offers the procedure for as little as $399 per eye, less than a quarter of the average price of $1,800. My personal goal is to make LASIK affordable for everyone, not just for the rich and famous. Not Chan boasts that he is not only the least expensive LASIK surgeon in the country, but also has one of the highest volumes, doing as many as 200 procedures a day. For comparison, other doctors we talk to do about 200 per week. When you say 200 eyes a day, how many is that an hour? That is uh, approximately 20 an hour. An hour. That's six minutes per patient. Right. Three minutes per eye. Right. You make it sound like an assembly line. Well, it, it, unfortunately, it, it can sound like that. But clearly, our intention is not to, uh, to, to provide that type of service. Dr. Jan does not screen his own patients for LASIK. 
Stacy Simmons is sent to an optometrist in Manhattan. The technician there measures Stacy's pupils. Nine millimeters. Nine millimeters, among the largest possible. But one thing they don't check is the thickness of Stacy's corneas. According to our experts, a crucial measurement for LASIK. The owner later told Primetime they never check corneal thickness. He said it's up to the surgeon to do more thorough testing. Several weeks later, Stacy shows up for her operation with Dr. Jan. She asks if she can speak with the surgeon. Hi, I'm Dr. Jan. He's have a seat. Stacy wonders about possible complications. The doctor says there are risks with any surgery, but with LASIK, they're very low. And he says her chart looks good. So based on that, you're a great candidate. I'm a great candidate. Okay. Stacy is now near the front of the line, and the doctor asks if she's next. No, I've got, I have four okay. people in front of me. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll see okay. you four people later. Okay. But just before she's called for her operation, Stacy wants to speak with Jan one last time. There are some people that cannot have it done because of certain reasons, like um, if your corneal thickness isn't sufficient. Okay. But in your case, your degree of nearsightedness is not high enough for us to be concerned about that. So basically, I'm a good candidate. You're a good I candidate. just need you to reassure me. That's okay. That's okay. That's what I'm here for. After that, Stacy leaves the clinic. We showed our hidden camera footage to our expert doctors, Soloway and Della Russa. It's shocking. It's, it's just unbelievable. What would have happened if he'd gone ahead and... She would get uh, corneal grafts, had to have her, her corneas replaced. She would have had to have a corneal transplant? Yes. We now thought it was time to talk with Dr. Jan who told us he's done more than 10,000 operations and never had a patient whose vision was hurt by the procedure. Along with that lower price, are your patients getting a lower quality of care? No, they're not. Absolutely not. No shortcuts? No shortcuts. He said all his patients are checked for pupil size and corneal thickness. Of course, we know that in Stacy's case, they never measured the thickness of her corneas, just 435 microns. Dr. Chan, let me pose a hypothetical for you, okay? We asked him about someone with Stacy's exact eye measurements and whether he would operate on the patient. Good candidate for LASIK? Probably not. There are some red flags there for LASIK. Red flags? Yes. In that particular case, the 435 microns is, uh, is too much of a red flag. I don't think I would. Okay. Uh, the reason I asked, Dr. Jan, is because we sent a woman to see you a couple of weeks ago named Stacy Simmons, mm -hmm. and you told her that she was a good candidate, mm -hmm. and you were moments away from operating on her. Okay. Those were her eye measurements. I see. I interesting. Um, I would have to, you know, review the chart. Jan said he would have told Stacy about the risks had, uh, before operating on her. That is a, a particular case in which we would have sat down before the procedure and talked about it. Well, I have to tell you, that's not what happened, sir. You told her she was a good candidate, and you were ready to operate on her right then and there. To prove the point, we played the tape of Stacy's hidden camera visit for the doctor. I'm a good candidate. You're a good I candidate. just need you to reassure me. Astonishingly, now Dr. Jan reversed himself, saying that as long as Stacy was informed of the risk and was still willing to go ahead with surgery, he could operate on her safely. Dr. Chan, I am completely confused. A few moments ago, you told us it would be too great a risk to operate on somebody with, as you put it, all those red flags. Yes, I understand your point. I I'm pretty confident, 99.5% confident she would have done, done well. But the issue of the glare and halos, you know, these are issues that... Uh... So you're saying now that if you gave her the straight story about her eyes, problems, that you would have no problems going ahead and performing this surgery. Exactly. But we found many patients who say they were never even given that choice, who were never told by their doctors they were bad candidates for LASIK. Jeff Hockman says the result can be trading a nuisance for a lifetime of misery. This is not the no-brainer that everybody seems you know, to portray it as. There are risks and there are trade-offs, and the downside is tremendous because the quality of your life definitely worsens.
Before you have laser eye surgery, the experts say, get a second, even a third opinion. And don't hesitate to ask your doctors how long they've been doing the procedure and whether they'll see you before the day of surgery to study your eyes. There's more on LASIK surgery at abcnews.com.